runners, are you ready to take your love for running to the next level? Whether you are lacing up for the first time or looking to crush your personal best, we're here for you. Today, we are embarking on an exciting journey. How to train for a half marathon. From zero to 21 kilometers, we're here to provide you some tips, some training ideas, and motivation to hit that finish line like a champ. So, lace up your shoes and let's hit that ground running and let's dive in. A half marathon is considered a long distance race where you are running about 13.1 miles or 21 kilometers. Now, typically to start training for a half marathon, you do want to train at least two to four months prior to that race. And most people transition from running either a 5K or a 10 miler right into that half marathon. Now to be consistent and successful of running a half marathon, you do want to consistently be increasing your mileage to accumulate your body to run that long distance race. Now most beginner training program will start you out with running at least three miles per run. And then you can work your way up from there so it's generally suggested to run at least three times a week to start out. And newer runners may start out running about 10 to 15 miles per week and then gradually build themselves up to peak about 25 to 30 miles per week. Whereas more experienced runners will start out running about 25 to 30 miles per week and then gradually build itself up to peak about 40 miles per week. Now to really challenge yourself while you go out for those runs, you definitely could try out different workouts for your runs. This will allow you to work on your endurance, your speed, and your pace pretty much. So some example workouts that you could do is speed runs. Now, speed runs will allow you to run at a fast tempo pace for a short amount of time. So for example, you would go out there and run about 30 seconds or a few minutes or 100 meters to 800 meters for really fast interval. These would be followed by recovery such as jog or walk. Now speed runs do help you work your endurance and your pace out there in a controlled environment. Another workout is easy runs. Now easy runs gonna allow you to run at a conversational pace and these would be known as recovery runs, which is great to do after a long run and still allow you to go out there and build up your mileage for that week. Long runs. Now, long runs is going to be the most important run of the week. This would be the longest run you did that week and allow you to build up your endurance. And it's typically done at a conversational pace. Now, a long run would typically start at a certain mileage but you definitely want to gradually work yourself up to run longer miles doing this actually run. Now, if you have worked yourself up to run about 10 or 11 miles doing that long run, then you typically setting yourself up to really knock out that 13.1 miles. A great thing about the long run is that you can use this run to stimulate the race conditions. So that means that you definitely could practice your pace and your fueling for that long run. You definitely want to be incorporating cross training to your training plans for your half marathon training. Now cross training is going to complement your actually running because you're not going to be running every day. 
So you definitely want to incorporate cross training, which would be known like strength training or a low intensity cardio, like swimming, cycling, or even walking. Now you can think about doing your strength training or cross training at least two times a week. And the benefit of strength training is that it actually gonna help you to prevent injury, increase your power and your endurance and mobility for those actually running mechanics to go out there and run strong. As a long distance runner, it's important to run in the correct gear. So that means when you out on your run, you wanna make sure that you are not wearing cotton because cotton will weigh you down and make you feel uncomfortable and may also cause chafing. So you wanna make sure that you are wearing dry fit clothing because, or moisture wicker clothing and these items will wick sweat away from the skin. And now for your shoes, you want to make sure that you're wearing the proper shoes for your running gait and your running type. So you're going to go to a running store and get fitted with shoes professionals that will be able to put you with the right shoes for your right correct gait. Another thing you may want to think about as a runner is to have two separate pairs of shoes so you can rotate it to help keep those shoes recovering between each run. You wanna make sure that you also do a dress rehearsal with whatever clothing or outfit you think you're gonna to wear to that half marathon race. Because you never wanna wear anything new on race day. And that way you can know is this clothing, is it feel comfortable? or is it causing any chafing or any issues, you'd be able to evaluate that before race day. Nutrition. Now carbs is a huge thing for long distance runner, and I know you have heard about it. Now the reason carbs is very important is for the glucose. Now glucose is very important for runners because that glycogen that breaks down in the bloodstreams from that carbs will help with energy. And long distance runner needs energy while we're out on our run. Now you wanna look at beginning 30 to 60 grams of carbs while you're out on your run. And you're looking at that at least every hour. Now, lots of long distance runner tends to eat carbs leading up to their race. So you want to make sure that you are carb loading diet three to four days before your half marathon race. Now this is still pretty controversial in the running community. Some people don't believe you need to carb load. Some people do. I just tend to carb load and I have found that pretty helped me on my runs. So therefore you just do whatever that fits best for you but make sure you do try it with your training. And the day before your race, you could also make sure you eat something pretending carbs. A lot of runners go for pasta or pizza or things like that. Water and hydration is very important. You wanna make sure that you are hydrated properly while you're out on your run because dehydration could slow you down and not something that you want to deal with as a runner. So any runs that you're doing over 90 minutes, do you want to think about hydrating yourself? Sports strength is also another great thing to add because sports strength helps refueling your cars and electrolyte. And another thing is as runners, we tend to lose electrolytes like that sodium and potassium through our sweat so therefore, you want to make sure that you are replacing that important electrolyte, magnesium, different um, electrolytes that will be covered in that sports drink. Race day. Now, you're going to be so excited or you may have some anxieties built up. Now, anxieties is also okay because 
anxiety is good, probably could help you be able to perform well on race day. So definitely check our video on how to deal with anxiety on that race, pre-race anxiety. Now, when you get ready to go to that start line, make sure that when you start that race, you don't start too fast. This is a lot of issue with a lot of runners. We get excited that gun go off and we run fast and we just gun it. You always want to run at least your first one to three miles a little bit more slower. If you do a bigger race, it's going to be a big crowd. So therefore, reserve your energy and just keep your pace steady and strong. Believe in yourself. You can do it and you have trained for this race. You are ready to perform and make it to that finish line. Before you even start for this race, you definitely want to make sure that you research the race. You need to know what is the hydration, what's the fueling they're given on that course. So therefore, you can even practice with whatever hydration, either the non-hydration, power rate, Gatorade. You want to make sure you have practice with that because either Berlin has a whole different hydration that they give out on the course. So no matter where you're going, you wanna make sure that that city or that country, especially doing international, is something that you probably wanna make sure you are practicing with. And also that gel, you wanna make sure that you have used a honey stinger, you use it that GU gel, so therefore you could know that your body could be able to tolerate that as well. Also, you want to know where is that porta potties will be located they do have porta potties on the course itself and at the start line. And check the elevation. Note if this is gonna be a flat race or a hilly course. And that way you could be able to perform great. Post race, you wanna celebrate. You may or may not be able to stretch, that is okay. Definitely make sure that you refuel and rehydrate. Make sure you eat something get that carbs, get that protein in your body. And just like that, we went the distance of the essentials of training for a half marathon. We hope you as pump up as we are. And remember, training for a half is all about the heart and the feel. So drop down in a comment below about if you want to share your progress, or if you have questions and we can't wait to hear from you until we see you next time. Bye bye.